Welcome to an epiphany with Tiffany. My name is Tiffany and I've just had an epiphany. This podcast is all about Christian singles looking for community. Christian dating can be quite a mess these days. I'll share stories from my guests and practical tips for successful love. Dating shouldn't be this hard, right? So grab your favorite snack or drink and curl up with this episode and you might just have an epiphany of your own. Yeah, why do you use pictures you can't live up to? Almost every first date is a letdown because women can't live up to their pics. Be it filters, be it angles, be it close-ups, hiding stuff, etc. Why not just throw it out there and let the chips fall where they may? Wouldn't you rather get asked less get asked less than have a ton of one and done dates okay um (laughs) well i think i think first off that question comes from a very oh what's the word i'm looking for a very skewed perspective Mm. because i don't i think that's already accusatory as it is (laughs) it's accusing like essentially all women of doing this and that's not necessarily the case Mm. Um, but as far as why do women use filters, I think because it just became a norm. I think that it became something that just like everybody started doing and then it became this thing. And I don't, I personally don't really have filters on mine. Uh, so I, I don't know. Like, I mean, it's hard because it's, I get it. I get feeling like showing up and feeling like this person doesn't look anything like what their pictures did. But at the same time, I think a lot of times (laughs) men do this too. (laughs) That's where like, I mean, they use angles. They just use really terrible angles a lot of times. (laughs) And I don't mean to be mean, but like the angle from your lap is not going to be the best angle (laughs) but um i think that i I, it's it's got to be an insecurity thing for women and i think also just because it did become an um Mm -hmm. you know what i mean like i think it's just something that you see everywhere you turn even professional photos are edited yes so you have to take a step back and say even if you go and have family photos taken with your family, those photos are edited. Mm. Every photo out there pretty much is edited. Not to mention the fact that then I you have to get into the, let's say I don't have any photos that are edited and you still think I don't look like my pictures. <clears throat> then yeah. what? You know what I mean? Then like, then the question is, I, phones are not 100%. We already know this. They invert photos. You look a little different than you did if you were like, you know, somebody looking at you and you looking in the mirror are two different views. And so I think that's really important to take with grace as well and understand that like our eye is not going to see exactly what a photo is, nor is it going to see a 3D image, like a 3D person standing in front of you is always going to look different than their photos. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like a little bit, at least they're always going to look different. I can tell you not a single man that I have gone out with looks exactly like his photos. Mm -hmm. It's not, I don't think it's possible to be completely honest. Yeah. And I mean, we could get into my whole theories of men and how they translate photos. (laughs) I don't know if we want to get into that. I mean, (laughs) why not? (laughs) <laughs> okay. Um, you. I, mean, I think that men have a very difficult time taking a 2D image on a piece of paper or on a computer screen or on a phone screen and translating it to what they see in front of them. I think that there is something in their brain hardwired because I see so many women's stories where they're like, I didn't lie about this. I, I showed photos of my full body. I, you know, like I have these photos and I've seen them and it's like, but he says, well, you don't look anything like that. Well, but, but she does. And I'll look at it and I'll say, but she does. It looks exactly, you look like this. This is your photo. Like I can tell that this is the same person. Mm -hmm. And, but the feedback they're getting is that they don't look anything like their photos. And it's like, wait a minute, you know, it's, there's something, there's a disconnect there. Mm -hmm. There's, there's some sort of disconnect and I don't know what it is. I don't scientifically know how that works. Mm -hmm. So I am not a scientist, but I have seen it multiple times where men are like, you look heavier in your photo. And it's like, or you look heavier in person than you were in your photo. And it's like, but actually I weighed more in my photo. Right. And like, that's where it's like, wait a minute it's it's something up here that up in your brain that they don't they don't translate it the same way i think 
<laughs> and this is going to sound really far fetched. And this is just something that <laughs> I personally have come up with. And this is a theory that nobody can plan or trace. So you can't study it. I don't think you, whatever. But um, I think in the same way that women take emotional, um, the way that women emotionally fill in the blanks mm. per se with men. Mm -hmm. The way that we sit here and we're like, oh, he did this and this. That must mean that X, Y, Z. And it doesn't mean X, Y, Z. But we fill that in in our head. We start right. to fill in this life. We start to fill in all these extra things emotionally. I think visually men fill in the blanks. Huh. I think they fill in what they see, like what they think is missing from the photo. Hmm. And so then they have a perceived image that when that person shows up, it's not the same. Huh. <laughs> I don't know how I don't know how you like figure that out. I don't know, but I I don't know. It's playing on their strengths, but also their weaknesses. I think. Yeah, but on the flip side, w the way that we do that, it's playing on our strengths and weaknesses, also. Yeah, absolutely, like, absolutely. Wow, girl, girl, I'm gonna be up real late thinking about that one. <laughs> it's oh just a theory I have. I don't. It might not be right, but it's something I'm seeing. So. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, it would kind of make sense, though, like, because, you know, there's the stereotypical men are visual, right? And right. You know, we ignore and that women, women are emotional. We think yeah. more with our emotions. Exactly. Yeah, which is which is correct, you know, but it also leaves out the aspect of women can be very visual as well. <laughs> and they men, can be. Yeah. But it can be, but I think, too, with women, when they are visual, I think that there is still an element of the emotional added to it. Mm -hmm. do you know what I mean yeah like yeah I can see somebody and think they're attractive but like does that mean I actually like until I get something emotionally back from that person they're just an attractive person out there in the world do you know what I mean valid yeah you know yeah, yeah. and they're a dime a dozen there's a million attractive people out there in the world <laughs> like I mean, there's more than a million, I'm sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there's a lot of people on the planet, but you know, like, yeah. I don't know. I mean, valid, very valid point. Yep. I'm over here like thinking through like, okay, yeah, yeah, you're right. Like, I, yeah, <laughs> I'm still trying to like process through that thought. Uh, but yeah, I was just thinking about it. I'm like, oh, well, that guy was really attractive. But then you like when you add the emotional aspect to it of other guys that I found even more attractive i'm like oh yeah there was more of like an emotional base there so mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. yep okay you right but <laughs> 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 so we're gonna talk about the first date question um when going okay. on a first date before having met in real life how much do you consider cost do you understand if the guy doesn't want to invest too much until after you meet or does that make you think he is cheap and will dismiss him i think that a lot of times, <laughs> a lot of times we don't spend enough time vetting these people before we take them out. Mm. I think a lot of times men, and, and I've noticed this just because these are responses that I get, like immediately want to get you on a date. Right. Immediately. Like, hi, hi, how's it going? Hey, can I take you out on Friday? Like, it's like almost immediate. And it's like, you don't know anything about me. Mm -hmm. Why do you think you want to take me out? Mm -hmm. Why do you have anything like what is what is even spurring that information unless it's like some sort of desperation and you're just trying to get people out or you are looking for something else? You're not intentionally trying to get to know who I am mm -hmm. in order to know if you want to take me out. <laughs> like, yeah. So I think part of the problem is, is we spend so much time not vetting people and we end up on a million different dates that don't go anywhere because we are not, we're not being intentional. I think that's the reality. And I think the problem is with these, like with the cost situation, you wouldn't end up on a million and one dates if you were really intentionally trying to figure out who you're looking for. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of times if, if we took a step back and really, really gauged what we wanted, what we were looking for, what these people are really stayed true to like our beliefs, our core values are and found these things out beforehand. You're not going to be as likely to be in a situation where a, a woman is going out with you just because you, she's getting a free meal. Because I really honestly don't think that happens as often as we hear it happens. 
but that's a whole other conversation. <laughs> but I think that as far as the cost of the date, I want somebody that actually wants to go out with me. Mm-hmm. And every time I've done a coffee date or a low effort, whatever, to me, that feels like there's, it feels like they're just trying to get as many dates as they can mm. within a small, short window without spending any sort of investment. And <clears throat> to be real, it's not about the cost. I want to, I want to like emphasize that it is not about the cost. Some of the best dates I went on were virtually free. Mm-hmm. But it was more creative. It was more geared towards the conversations we had. It was more, it, it, there was more effort involved. There was more getting to know me. There was more, you know what I mean? Like, I don't care if you spend a ton of money. I could care less if you spend any money. I'm always like freaked out. Like, <laughs> like the other night when I went out with that guy and I was all stressed out about the restaurant because he had me pick and it's like, but I don't want to be the one to pick because I don't know what your budget is. I don't know what you want to do. I don't want to pick something that's out of, that's crazy here. Right. But at the same time, I want you to be creative. I want you to try. I want you to show effort and show that you actually see who I am, which you should have already vetted before we before we went out. Because to me, I think a first date is you're going out with somebody you've already decided you're interested in. Mm. I think the coffee date is no different than having a phone call before. Mm. I think um, to me, having those conversations and things beforehand are far more important than a quick coffee date that you put zero effort into and you just kind of threw it out there Mm -hmm. to 17 women this week. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> it sounds bad, but every coffee date I've been on, that's been the case. Every one of those men ha- were literally just going out with somebody to go out with somebody. Mm-hmm. And honestly, I'm sure they all had ulterior motives, to be completely honest. But I think somebody who really is trying to get to know who you are actually is showing effort. And I think that is more important than the cost of a date. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Right. Honestly, one of my favorite dates I ever went on, it didn't work out, but one of my favorite dates was, I know this is not in everybody's realm of possibility because not everybody is an annual pass holder, but we both happen to be Disneyland annual pass holders. And we literally got a beer and walked around and enjoyed the Christmas stuff and then walked over and watched the fireworks. He paid for one beer. That's it. Like it was a, you know, $12 beer at the time. And that was it. Mm Mm-hmm. And so it's like, it's the cost is not important. It's what you do, yes. I think is way more important. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so, yes, <laughs> <laughs> I wholeheartedly agree. I'm over here like, it doesn't matter. It's, it's more about the intention behind yes. what we're doing. Did you take the time to find out what I'm interested in and uh-huh. plan something accordingly? <laughs> like, yeah, like- I mean, honestly, get a bottle of wine and go sit at a park and watch the sunset. Like, I don't care. Heck yeah, that's a perfect date right there. You know what I mean? Like, it, you can still have these get to know somebody in a setting that isn't like, oh, I did the generic coffee date. Like, I also probably have the like anti coffee dates because I can't do coffee. Right. And now that it's become the most acceptable cheap date, I feel like this horrible person being like, well, I can't do coffee dates. And I'm like, I swear it's not about the money, but I just, you know, like, I just can't do coffee. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But it puts me in this really awkward place because that's become the narrative that that is the only acceptable like option. And it's like, okay, come on. Like we, we can be more creative. We can try a little bit harder. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we could. I I mean, especially considering the fact that nowadays most coffee shops and like the the coffees that you're going to get cost just as much as a as two beers or a bottle of wine or, you know, (laughs) those those things like coffee is expensive. I mean, yeah. Which is, which is great. I would prefer a bottle Agreed. of wine. <laughs> Agreed. It's, it's expensive. And yeah, I, I don't know. And yeah, I mean, I'm trying not to get ranty, but I want to get ranty at the same time. Um, this <laughs> is in my, this is my, this is in my interview. <laughs> um anyway yeah it's just i mean you know you we talk about this all the time but like the intention and i know that that word is like such a buzzword right now but whatever um but i think it's an important word even though it's a buzzword it's an important word because if you really look at it yeah intention is important if you don't have intention then what are we doing here Mm -hmm. yeah you know what i mean yeah 
I know in one of your other responses, you talked about clarity and like what that looks like. And here we go. It was the intentional question. Cool. cool. (laughs) How Uh can a guy be more intentional when he's interested in you? So yeah, the first bold word was clarity. So anyway, yes, that was, uh, yeah. Can you be clear on what you're trying to do here? Like, I mean, I think we all struggle with understanding that. I think that is probably the number one, maybe very much at the top thing that women struggle with Mm -hmm. understanding men's clarity men as a general i'm not saying all of them and i'm not saying it happens all the time but generally do not give the clarity Mm -hmm. that we need Mm -hmm. i think that you know especially like as a godly man like we've talked about this several times like Mm -hmm. if you're gonna be coming into a situation like this to be not only the godly leader that you're supposed to be but understanding that this woman is a woman of you know, a child of God, like you cannot come in and just be wishy-washy. And like, that's, that's not how it's done. That's not, it's not acceptable behavior. It's I'm all for as much clarity as you can possibly give. And I think it's not that hard to give it. And I think a lot of times men don't like to make decisions or be assertive in their decisions. Mm. Um, these days, I think it always used to happen. I don't think it's as much the case these days. And so I think like we're left wondering like, but what is he thinking? What is happening? What is going on? And it's like, no answer is not an answer here. Yes. No response is not a response here. I know that, that that's like kind of like not the way that people want us to believe these days. They want us to believe like ghosting is an answer. No, it's not. It's not an answer. It's mm-hmm. not clarity. It's not. It leaves people very like open-ended and if you never end things properly like you are really just adding fueling the fire and adding to extra trauma and things that people don't need like just be a person just be a man of god be a man of character be a man of quality and just give real clarity Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you keep on preaching on that because amen (laughs) i mean it's insane i Honestly, like I, I don't even understand like how it doesn't happen. I really don't. I'm baffled by the amount of times that people are just like, oh, well, I just won't ever speak to them again. I'm sorry. What? Like Mm -hmm. (laughs) you just spent three months getting to know me and this and that and everything else. And then you're just gone. Like, it's like, that's the kind of thing that I'm like, wait, no Mm -hmm. confusion is not a thing of God. I'll just put it that way. Yeah. Well, he's so when not. you're giving me confusion, <laughs> you aren't walking. I don't know. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, you are walking yes. somewhere else with someone else. <laughs> That's the case. <laughs> exactly. And I mean, I know that might come off a little judgy to other people, but it's, it might. It, it's so true, though. Like, if you. <sighs> okay. Thoughts. Um, if you are going to start communicating with a girl, um, and I feel like this does go both ways. Okay. But we're, we're women. So of we're course. talking about guys here. Um, right. <laughs> but if you are starting to talk to somebody and you're asking all those questions and you're really trying to get to know them, and then all of a sudden you find something that you don't like, right. For whatever the reason may be. Okay. That's fine. Those are your those are your things. Yeah. But stop doing this bull crap thing of like, well, I'm not going to be a man and like tell her, hey, you know, I didn't really like this or I guess I, you know, I'm not that interested or, you know, whatever, like whatever the line what? is fine, but put it out there. Like, don't leave us over here hanging and wondering yes. what it was that changed your mind, <laughs> you know? Because again, clarity is, it's so great because the other thing is too, with we should be leaving each other better than we found each other. Yes. And in that aspect, like who knows if in that, in that instance, you weren't somebody that God put into this person's life to be like, Hey, you know, this is something that I see and, you know, in a loving brotherly way, (laughs) maybe this is something you should work on. Because we we all have blind spots, right? And sometimes somebody from the outside that's not our friend, you know, can see that differently than people who are closer to us. Absolutely. 
Yeah. Like maybe it's something that we need to work on that we don't realize that we're being off putting in some way or another or, you know, insert thing here. Right. (laughs) Um, For sure. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, I think that's huge. I think it's very important to have that conversation because then you do leave somebody just wondering, what did I do? Mm -hmm. And you have no idea what you did. And odds are you didn't do anything Mm -hmm. a lot of the time. But at the same time, you don't know that because they didn't say anything. Mm -hmm. There was no like conversation. There has to be a conversation. (laughs) Like you have to be an adult. Like, I'm sorry. I know it's hard to have to say these things to people, but you're an adult. Yeah. I have no problem telling people why and when I'm done. (laughs) What? (laughs) (laughs) When I'm done, I'm done. And (laughs) you will know why. (laughs) Yeah. You know, like, I'm sorry. Like, If it's something, I mean, obviously, if it's something super disgraceful and, you know, but disrespectful, whatever, obviously, I'm going to let you know. But like, I think there's even like a simple, hey, I really think you're a great person, but I don't think it's a fit for me. Mm -hmm. It's that simple. It's really not that hard. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, because we're not going to be a fit for everybody. Like, that's not the point. (laughs) Absolutely not. (sighs) Yeah. But the lack of information, I think, just leads people to then start to wander in their own head and they start to question, like, what did I do? What did I not do? What did I did I not say the right thing? Did I not? You know, and it's like, I get it. We should be able to fill that in and be like, it doesn't matter, whatever. But it does matter. You Mm -hmm. know, it's like it does. I want to know if I did something to upset you. I want to know if I did something that is, like you said, off putting or like, you know, I want to know what those things are. Mm hmm. Because I can't change them and move forward if I don't know what they are. Exactly. Exactly. And yeah, like there's nothing wrong with saying like, hey, you know, you're not the match for me, but I think you can be a match for somebody else. Like, hey, maybe something, this is an area you can work on or whatever. Like, because again, we all have those areas and you know like you and i can be very sarcastic what um (laughs) not at all (laughs) (laughs) she said sarcastically um (laughs) literally (laughs) um so you know some guys don't like that right which okay to each their own but also i can understand why they don't you know so if somebody came to me and was like hey you know we understand that you're sarcastic you know or whatever but but maybe like work on your tone with you know whatever right because i know my tone can sometimes (laughs) be lacking um (laughs) so you know and then that could be something that i move forward watching and going oh okay you know you're right like maybe i need to check myself in this particular instance because especially I'm being triggered by something you know what I mean like if somebody says something and I have this visceral reaction I need to go okay wait why am I reacting before I actually say something right right you know and again like that can come out in different ways but that's just like one example that I know for me because yeah (laughs) <laughs> no, for sure. And like, no, but like you said, um, when you were saying the sarcasm thing, like, yeah, that's not necessarily a bad trait about somebody. It just might not be something that works for you. Right. So it's not that big of a deal to open, speak up and say, hey, like, I just don't really think that that worked for me. You know, like, it's not, it's not that hard, but like, then, you know, okay, well, he just wasn't into that maybe none of no guy is, or maybe somebody else is like, yeah. you never know. Yeah. But at least you have some sort of feedback. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the one thing I've literally never gotten from a single man ever. Yeah. So that's, <laughs> <laughs> there's been zero clarity from any of them across the board. So, mm-hmm. and I think also clarity on top of that, like going into the, like, this is the negative side of it, but like the positive side of it is like intentional clarity. Like, where are you taking this? Mm -hmm. I need to know, are you just leading me on? Are you just screwing around? Are you just, where are you at? I need to see clear paths. If you are a leader, if you are this godly leader that we're supposed to be here, Mm -hmm. are you leading us in a direction or are you not? Are you floundering? Are we just hanging out? Are we just, what is happening? Mm -hmm. And I think that's another thing that women have a really hard time with. We don't, we're trying to follow, but we can't follow if you're not actually leading anywhere. 
Silent clap. <laughs> Silent clap on that one, even though you can hear it. <laughs> but literally, like, you know, like I, I just I don't know. That goes with the intention. Like, what are your intentions? What are we what are we doing here? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, and if we want to get philosophical and psychological on this train of thought, because why not? Um, You know, (laughs) why why the heck not? Um, I feel like to give guys some some guys, not all guys, but some guys the benefit of the doubt. They weren't trained. They don't know what it is to be a leader. And we can get into that conversation if you want to. But (laughs) it's just like, okay, where does that come in in that like points back to the generation before you know and like where was that training because i feel like that sometimes too of like what does it really mean to follow what does it really mean to submit (laughs) what does that really look like you know and in today's day and age of modern you know what um Mm -hmm. you know what i mean and it's just like okay but still yeah, we can't, we cannot, you have to be worthy of the submission. And it's uh-huh. like, if you're not, not, okay, hang on, I want to, I want to word that differently. <laughs> um, if you're presenting characteristics that show that you're not actually a leader, then heck yeah, we're going to have a really hard time trying to figure out what that submission looks like, you know? Mm-hmm. And again, we all go through our times. Like I'm saying, if say I'm in a marriage, somewhere down the road, the road, Lord willing. And my husband is just in this, you know, frame of mind where his heart's a little hard and he's not really following the Lord. Right. What am I supposed to do in that scenario? Not follow him because he's not following what he's supposed to be following. You know what I mean? Right. Right. In that, in that scenario, I'm going to be praying <laughs> and I'm going to be sitting there going, okay, honey, hello. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? But ultimately, oh, I'm following man, Christ. I, I grew up in that household, so I can tell yeah. you all about that one. Oh yeah. God. You know what I mean, though? Like, <laughs> No, I agree. I, I think that, and I, I was talking to actually my roommates about this the other night. We had this conversation about how like women are just like so independent. They're trying to do their own thing and they're trying to not submit. And I said, yes and no. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I said, here's mm-hmm. part of the problem is that I think a lot of women have been forced into this independence. Not Mm -hmm. all. Obviously, there are absolutely a lot of them that have decided this all on their own. But I think that um, a lot of women have been forced into this. And I said, you know, submission is not I'm going to obey everything you say. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a big misconception that the church has vastly butchered through the years. I think that there's a lot of men who think it means obedience. It means I tell you to go do the dishes. You go do them right now. Mm -hmm. I tell you to go do this. You go do it right now. And it's like, no, 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 no. Submission is done. Because let's be honest here. Jesus had to submit to God, right? Right. When he came down to earth, he did this thing. He knew it was his path. But the reality is he did it willingly because of the fact that he, how do I word this? Mm -hmm. The leadership is so strong and you are so trusting of that leader that you know, whatever he is going to do is going to be the right thing. So therefore you just naturally follow. Mm -hmm. You naturally are going to go to him first for X, Y, and Z. You naturally are going to do these things. It's not a matter of like, you tell me what to do and I obey you. That's not it. It's that we will naturally just follow the leader. Do you know what I mean? Like if he's, if he's, I'm trying to figure out like a scenario where that makes sense, but Mm -hmm. I don't think submission is something that is, it's not domineering. It's not, do you know what I mean? It's very much that we just naturally want their opinion. We naturally go to them for all of the things because we know that they've already talked to God about this. We know that they already know what is the path they're taking because God's already told them what path we're taking as a family. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so we follow it because we know he already went there first. And so it's not something where you have to turn around and be like, no, this is what we're doing. And you're going to follow directions. Like, you know what I mean? Like it's, (laughs) it's just natural. I think it is like, I don't know, maybe I'm crazy, but (laughs) I think it is the natural way when somebody is really doing their role. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it's, I don't want to get on a rant about generational trauma and stuff like that, but absolutely. (laughs) 
you know, but like, I keep, this keeps coming up and I'm like, okay, this is probably what God really wants everybody to hear. And, you know, it's like, what are we as the millennial generation that are still single yeah. going to do to fix it? Right. You know, cause it's on us now. Like, yeah, some Gen Zers are getting to the point where they can get married, but there is still a huge chunk of millennials that are unwed. And oh, yeah. where the heck is the revival? Like, what what are we doing as a generation right, right. Of, of believers? Because I don't right. know about y'all, but I don't I don't want to be like left in the in the dust and just like when the world looks back. <laughs> You know what I mean? And like, oh, well, this yeah. generation did this and this generation did this, but this generation completely just disappeared because they were too scared to do anything about it. Like what? You know, right. we were all put because here. Because we we've created narratives like, <laughs> <laughs> never mind. I can't even go there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, we might go it. back there in a second. <laughs> um, <laughs> mm-hmm. uh-huh. Okay. Um. <laughs> anyway, so <laughs> the, like we were put here for such a time as this whether it is legitimate in times or not yeah we don't, we don't know that and right. what is our generation doing as you know like individuals but also the possibility of being couples like what what the heck you know we are all better together than apart so right. why can't we figure this out out and like what is the big hold up and that's a whole nother that's that's another thing i won't rant off about but um my personal beliefs on what that is (laughs) (laughs) Mm. i might need to talk about that later (laughs) yeah (laughs) we will talk about that in a voice memo later um (laughs) but you know what i'm saying and yeah i think the more of these that i'm doing the more i'm like okay i am really seeing the pattern here and i'm just really hoping that guys start to listen and actually act because yeah. like not that it's it's not all on them obviously like there is stuff that we need to no. as you know women work on too but like absolutely that's the whole point of this conversation anyways <laughs> so right. so let men know what we're actually thinking and yeah I think it's important. I think having a voice that isn't like the voices that are already out there. (laughs) Word that nicely. (laughs) You can fill that one in. Um, Great wording. (laughs) I think it's really important. I think they need to see that what the world tells us is normal is not normal. What Mm. the world tells us is the way everything is, is not the way everything is. Mm -hmm. I think it's really important to have these conversations and have them very vocally because I think they need to understand that we're not coming at this from like a horrible place. Like we genuinely want what they want. We -hmm. just need to understand where the disconnect is. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I mean, we genuinely, we genuinely want the husband that is a leader that we can submit to. We genuinely want this godly person that will lead the family. We want these things. Mm Mm-hmm. It's just not happening. <laughs> it's like, I mean, it's super frustrating, <laughs> but you know, it, it is what it is at this point. And we're just, I, I agree. I, what are we doing to fix this problem? Yeah. Like what, because again, we all have different callings on our life. Right. And yes. the, like my kingdom marriage to use that term is going to look different than your kingdom marriage. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, but why, <laughs> why is it such a struggle to take all the other bull crap out of it you know what i mean right right. and look at this other person and be like hey we have common goals god has laid common desires on our heart and heck yeah let's do this together yeah Yeah. absolutely i think we are complicating things far too much Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. very much so i mean we've ranted about that one for a hot minute already but yeah it's there's too much pressure being put on all of this stuff. And it's yeah. it's all from the world, in my opinion. And yeah. it doesn't it doesn't need to be there. Like no. it it doesn't. It really doesn't. <laughs> uh that's not to say that, you know, like things like attraction are important, but you know, it's just like when you put too much weight into the outward, um, yeah. you know, you're like ignoring the fact that God could be putting somebody in your life that is actually what you need, not necessarily what you want. Yeah, <laughs> you know? no, I completely agree. I think that I think that, yeah, I <laughs> like, mm, uh-huh. I think that that's huge. I think that 
you're missing a lot when that's the case, when that's what you're really looking for first and foremost, that's, you're missing a lot. And so, um, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know how to even, like, I mean, you, you might, I, I don't know. I think there's a lot of choices out there and I think we get paralyzed by choices and I, I think that's a huge problem as well, but we don't really give time and effort and intentionality to <laughs> to the people that we go out with you know like I don't know yeah. it's always somebody else on the next you know and I know myself like I I don't I don't want the next person <laughs> like <laughs> I, I probably would have married the guy that I was in love with at 22 but like so the reality is like how do we stop this choice paralysis mm. you know what I mean Mm-hmm. How do we stop that? Like how I, I don't feel that it affects me at all because I am intentionally talking to people that I think fit the mold and fit the value system that I'm looking for and have common ground and have, but like, I, I can't help it if there's always a better choice. Yeah. Not for me, but for them. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> oh, I do know. Um, you know, it's like the grass isn't always greener just because, oh. you know, it looks like it is like there will always be somebody else who always. may or may not fit you better. You know what I mean? And it's like, mm-hmm. when when are you going to make that choice to make it work with this other person that you actually need versus what you think you want for you? Yeah. 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 And I think, too, like because of this choice option, we don't really put enough effort into getting to know the person that we just took out. Yes. I think it's like a, no, they said the wrong thing once they're done. And it's like, wait, stop, stop it. (laughs) Like, did you really evaluate and did you really give it a go? Did you really try to get to know this person Mm -hmm. and then made a clear decision? No, this is not going to work. You know what I mean? Like, I think that's, there's, there's no real, I don't want to say effort, but no real, like, we're not really trying to get to know these people we're we're done after one day we're we're quitting like we Mm -hmm. we just bust through them like you know what i mean Mm -hmm. and it's like why why what on earth like yeah did you even know that person enough to know that they weren't right for you did you Mm -hmm. even like ask you know like or is it really just about appearance Mm -hmm. (laughs) that's you know what i mean like yeah did you really even get to know them no you didn't Mm -hmm. yep we I had a couple conversations with some of the other ladies already and like that topic kind of came up and I asked them, I'm like, do you think we're ending talking stages too quickly for whatever reason, like yeah. distance or, you know, mm-hmm. insert uh-huh. thing here. Right. Yeah. And, you know, and they're like, oh, yeah, definitely. I think we are. And and I was like, huh. I, I, I don't know because <laughs> I know I've done that in the past, you know, like or whatever, but also. As you know, in the last year, I have been ghosted by way too many men. Um, I mean, you've seen my graveyard. I can't even, I can't <laughs> nothing. Like, the so last year, there's like 50 men in the graveyard. Like, so, yeah. I mean, it, but it's just ridiculous. It goes back to like the intentionality thing, obviously. Yeah. But it's also like, I mean, I've, I have quote ended a few, um, like situationships in my time, but you know, they were all for very, very specific reasons. It wasn't just like, oh, okay, yeah, I'm done with this. It was something was said and I, you know, whatever, yeah. you know what I mean? And it's just kind of like, yeah. I, I think the problem is a situationship is really someone that's not being in intentional and Mm. not leaving the relationship anywhere Mm -hmm. so that i think is valid to end that you know what i mean like they're not looking to go anywhere Mm -hmm. you're just you're just doing all the things of a relationship without any direction without any like you know so that is valid Mm -hmm. um i personally am of the belief that a talking stage quote unquote Mm -hmm. is really only the time period before a date mm, okay i believe it after that you you, uh, you go on a date you go on another date that's dating you are now dating that person you may date multiple people whatever mm-hmm. but the talking stage is the very beginning and i'm okay with you ending it during that time right i think we end things too quickly when we've decided to make the next step and try to get to know somebody like we've we've talked we've established that we like this person enough to take them on a date right and i think at that point, that means that 
you need to pursue this a little bit harder. You need to understand, like you need to fully understand what it is, unless it's like a major thing. But if it's just, oh, she said the wrong thing. Like when we, you know, like it, if it's something so minor that she clearly doesn't even know what happened, then you're, do you know what I mean? Like th- that's where I think, yeah, we're not giving these people chances to make any sort of mistake at all. Yeah. Like, you know, we're not like sitting back and saying, okay, they said this one thing, but maybe that's not a pattern. Or maybe that's, but you don't know that until you get to know them. You don't know that until you see them more frequently. Right. I'm of the value that I think every person deserves at least three dates before you make a decision. Mm. Now, for me, it rarely gets to that point, but... (laughs) but (laughs) that's my mentality going out with a man that I've already like essentially vetted I think you need at least three dates to know whether you actually want to continue pursuing this person or not you can't just go on one time it's like picking a church you can't go one time and be like nope they're out I'm out let's go try another like you don't know like if you really feel like, you know what I mean? Yeah. You yeah. can't do anything on a one-time opinion. Like, I mean, there's definitely obvious things that you would say no to. But like, right. but I'm talking about like, it went okay. Like, so what's the problem? Mm-hmm. Do you know try to get to know them a little bit further. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like, like, you already said that you can date multiple people, which I personally don't. But, you know, some people I do. don't really either. Like, I'm not going on dates actively with multiple people, but I, yeah. I know there are some people that are cool with that. So, you know, that's, you know, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> My girl over here is looking for a longer project. So if you fit that description, hit me up and I got a girl for you. OK. <laughs> Also, do you have other lumberjack friends? Because I would be down. <laughs> Literally. Uh, uh, okay. Anyway, so let's have a conversation about what assertiveness looks like to you. And mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. What does it look like to you? I think assertiveness to me is the opposite of passivity. And I think, and I, I've seen this on comment threads all over the place. Women are like passive, passive men. Pa- and it's like very like, they're not go-getters they're not going to just do it and make a decision it's Mm -hmm. the very timid personality of a man that is not attractive and Mm -hmm. i don't mean to be mean but like we are attracted to confidence in a man because in general if we are looking for a man that is going to be not only the leader of our home Mm -hmm. but the stronghold essentially i don't want a man that doesn't have the confidence to do those things Mm. do you know what I mean and I understand it's hard there's it's self-esteem and all of that is hard to get past yeah but that's that's your that's your work as a man that you have to do it you have to figure it out you have to move past those things Mm -hmm. I don't know how I I don't know if that takes therapy I don't know what it takes but you have to move past those things you will never get anywhere and I think a lot of times this is that like whole like well she friend zoned me well that's because you you were a passive man. You were not assertive enough to you're you're playing that oh poor me mentality. And I think that's the most unattractive thing that I've seen. Mm-hmm. And so I think that I want a man that knows what he wants. Right. I want a man who knows, sees it, and gets it. Not sits here and thinks about it for two days or well, more than that, but you know what I mean. Not sits around and thinks about it. Not that like goes back and forth on it. That's wishy washy. I guess that goes back to like the wishy washy mentality of not like being intentional. But like, I think that women don't, I mean, I know a lot of men think women want these bad guys. They always are going for the quote unquote chads, but we don't, that's not the reality. We don't want these bad guys. We want guys that are assertive like these guys. And you, and a lot of times women mistake that for being the good guy that's assertive, but like, we want the assertive guy. We want the guy that has a definitive answer, that knows where he's going, that knows what he wants, that knows we don't want somebody that's aggressive and mean and whatever. We don't want this bad guy. We we want a good one that knows what he's doing and can confidently make those decisions. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Yeah. And uh, I mean, as you know, yes. Uh-huh. 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 Yeah. Uh-huh. I do uh-huh. know. You do know. Um, you've heard me rant <laughs> about this enough in the last year um, to yeah. know how I personally feel about that specific thing, too. 
And again, there is a huge difference between being assertive and being an aggressive. Like, yeah. and, it, and it really comes down to the confidence. Like, yeah. you know, and over, like, obviously, if you're over aggressive, that's another, that's another thing. But um, right. having the confidence means you're going to be assertive. <laughs> It, I feel like those two go hand in hand. When somebody is communicating, I think they need to. Yeah, integrity is a huge part of it because of the fact that if you don't have integrity behind your communication, then what are you doing? Like what what I feel like it's so important. Like it goes back to I say I'm going to do something. I need to follow through with what I say I'm going to do. Mm. Um, you can communicate. I'll, I'll call you back whenever X, Y, Z. But then if you don't follow through with that, you the integrity is not there. You start to lose the integrity as time goes through because you're not following through with those things. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? But you you make a great point. Like when you when you don't follow through, mm-hmm. it's like that leads us into thinking that, you know, you're we're not a priority or you you had something better to do (laughs) or insert other negative thought pattern here. (laughs) You know what I mean? Instead of being a man that goes, Oh, Hey, like I'm going to go do this. You know, I will call you when I can or call you around this time. If something changes, I'll let you know. Okay. But then if that something changes, you actually send the text message and say, Hey, so sorry, this came up. I'm really, I like, I want to apologize. Can I call you tomorrow? Or, you know, can we set up a different time to talk or whatever? Like that to me is more like, okay, I'm going to be, I'm going to be way more understanding, especially, you know, with whatever the situation is like, you know, somebody called you you had to go take care of an emergency or you're a single dad and you have a kid you need to take care of like okay (laughs) you know i'm gonna be way more understanding (laughs) way more understanding of that (laughs) than just not even giving me any inkling that something happened and then texting me the next day and going oh yeah my bad i guess i could have communicated that better Sir, you could have communicated that at all. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. You didn't communicate at all. You left me hanging all night long, wondering, huh, I wonder why you haven't called. Especially after I sent another text message saying like, hey, uh, are we still going to have a phone conversation? Right. You know what I mean? So I absolutely do. For my recent scenarios as well. <laughs> I mean, but seriously, like you say you're going to call. Oh. Hey, I'm going to take a shower. I'll call you when I get out. Four hours later, you hear from them. <laughs> what, do you, what do you do with that? Where's the integrity there? You just forgot? Or you yeah. just, you take a really long shower? Or... <laughs> I mean, like, but then again, it starts to make you wonder what's going on, you know? And it's like, that is, again, goes back to the clarity. Like, it goes back to the intention. I feel like all of these things, all of these words really lead back to the same place. Mm -hmm. It's like, all of them are like, hey, we just want integrity, leadership, (laughs) you know, clarity. Yeah. They're all things that we're just looking for. And they all kind of intertwine together. (laughs) Mm -hmm. they really do though and i'm so tired of the phrasing which i mean okay i get to an extent but i'm i'm so tired of the phrasing of if he wants you he would pursue you okay cool cool that's fine sure there may be some truth to that but then you're kind of ignoring the other aspect of that of like okay so why are these all these other guys not married (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, yeah. what is what is it in their like characteristics or whatever that are keeping them from being in a relationship or being married? You know what I'm saying? Like, where's the other side of that coin? Because that phrasing puts the blame on us and or makes it feel like the blame is on us. You know what I mean? Like, oh, you're yeah. just not what he wants. So that's why he's not pursuing you. I'm sorry. No, just no. Mm-mm. That. Right. <laughs> Or is he just lazy, lacks integrity, lacks Mm. communication skills, lacks leadership, lacks assertiveness, lacks all of these things. Yeah. Is stuck in fear. Like, let's talk about that. You know, like the the spirit of fear is so prevalent in this generation. And that that goes on both sides of the coin. Okay. Absolutely. Um, But it's just like, what the heck, everybody? Like, we need to wake up and step out of that. (laughs) 
And yeah. stop letting that control all the decisions that we are making or the lack of decisions that we're making and then blaming it on, you know, insert here, right? Like whatever the other situation right, is. Right. It's ridiculous. Like it is no, honestly agree. ridiculous. Hey, thanks for listening. I hope you've enjoyed the stories and the perspectives that were shared in this episode. Please share it with a friend whose dating life might need some help. Wink, wink. If you want to connect with me on social media, you can find me on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter at an epiph with Tiff. I really hope to see you there. There are multiple ways that you can support my show. You can pray for me, rate, review, and share any episode that you love. Or you can even financially contribute by going to patreon.com slash an epiphany with Tiffany. Until next time, I'm Tiffany, and I hope you just had an epiphany. Bye.